When using phylogenetic trees, there's a couple different types of groups we can use. And there's some important vocabulary words we, descri we can use to describe these groups and type of relationships. Let's talk about what they are. Have some big words to talk about, namely monophyletic, paraphyletic, and polyphyletic. I recommend you take some time to practice pronouncing these words. Even though you're going to probably primarily use them in a written format, it's helpful to be able to say these words in your head because they're going to make more sense. So one more time, monophyletic, paraphyletic, and polyphyletic. But even before we talk about these terms, there's one other type of group we want to talk about. That is sister taxa. Sister taxa just means two groups or taxa in your phylogenetic tree that are more closely related to each other than they are to anyone else. So if we're using this tree as an example, lemurs and lorises are sister taxa because look, they are more closely related to each other than anyone else on this tree. Also, world world monkeys and apes are also sister taxa. Remember, what we are considering sister taxa is uh, highly dependent on what type of tree you're using as a reference. Because remember, old world of monkeys and apes, well, there's a lot of species in those two groups. So you might call humans and chimpanzees sister taxa because we are more closely related to each other without any other living species coming between us. But let's talk about these other types of groups. Um, there are many different ways you can group organisms when you have a phylogenetic tree. This is mainly we've already created a tree and now you're trying to describe it. The first type is a monophyletic group. You might also hear this called a clade. So here we have taken an ancestor and all of its descendants. So it's basically you take a tree and you just like snip one branch and everything that you took off, that is your monophyletic group. Here is a slightly different type of group. This is called paraphyletic. So now we've taken an ancestor and some of its descendants. So some, but not all. This last group is a little bit different. You might notice now we have to make even more cuts here to, to, um, to pull these out of our tree. Um, and now we've just taken kind of some random assortment of organisms and there's many other descendants that we are not including at all. Normally this is, we are grouping them together by homoplasy is generally what happens to be what's going on. But let's go back to our example here and let's see if we can pick out what type of group we're looking at. So if I circle lemurs and lorises, what type of group is this? Monophyletic, paraphyletic, or polyphyletic? If you guessed monophyletic, you would be correct. Because remember, we've taken an ancestor and all of its descendants. So we're um, all of these guys are more closely related. We could just snip it right in between the root and lemurs and lorises, and that is one entire group there. Now, what if I circle lorises and tarsiers? What type of group is this? Paraphyletic, monophyletic, polyphyletic? If you guess polyphyletic, that would be correct because look, there are so many other groups we're excluding here. Um, and honestly, lorises and tarsiers aren't incredibly closely related when we look at the relationships on this tree. So here is our last example. Now I've circled lemurs, lorises, and tarsiers. What type of group would you consider this one? Monophyletic, paraphyletic, or polyphyletic? This is an example of a paraphyletic group because now we've only taken some of the descendants and we're excluding others. Um, the, sometimes the differences between polyphyletic and paraphyletic can be a little bit you know subjective based on what you're considering but here we've basically just excluded all of our anthropoids on this tree um, so something we use this when um, these ideas when we're looking at taxonomy because we want to make sure that we're using those monophyletic groups as the basis for our taxonomy here um, and here's an example from primate molecular phylogeny so we actually have 16 61 primate genera um, two dermoptera genera and one skin gentia genus just you know um, help us understand um, who's more closely related to whom and it's all rooted by lagomorpha but you can see we've colored them in and each monophyletic clade has the same color, um, but that also reflects the different taxonomic groupings here. So up at the top, we have our circopithecoids or uh, old world monkeys in orange. Then we have our uh, hominoids or apes in kind of that light purple pinkish color. Um, and then in teal, um, those are our new world monkeys. Um, in blue, those are our lemurs and lorises, or sorry, no, those are just lemurs. And then we, in kind of that, weirdo olive green brown those are our lemurs um, and then everybody else who is outside of primates that's kind of in that black or gray right at the bottom there 
Um, but we can also use these types of words to interpret other groupings. So on this tree on our left here, uh, th these are human uh, mitochondrial haplogroups. Um, so if you look down at the bottom, the R group in purple, that is a monophyletic clade, but our N group, that's a little bit problematic. So we call this the N group, but that isn't purely monophyletic and some of them aren't necessarily close, more closely related to each other than they are to the R group. Um, the M group does appear to be monophyletic, but you notice we have a bunch of things called L that we had to denote by different numbers that aren't actually closely related at all. So um, this is what happens when you name stuff before you actually know how it's related. And that's why we've kind of had to go back and rename some of these different groups for uh, human mitochondrial haplotypes. Um, it is a little bit harder to interpret this other tree just because everything is so close together. Um, but you can see that the ancestor, um, primarily we have a lot of uh, African lineages that are kind of at the root for this tree. Um, these are again, human mitochondrial um, sequences. Um, they're slightly different from our tree on the left here. Um, and this is actually a classic paper that was one of the ev lines of evidence for why we think humans originated in Africa because we have so many African lineages that are close to the base of, of the human tree. Um, if you want some help understanding the differences between monophyletic, paraphyletic, and polyphyletic groups, please check out this fantastic blog post by, again, Dr. David Hone, who does such a wonderful job of explaining phylogenetics. So can you explain what are the different types of groups you can make in a phylogenetic tree?